जी स्टूडेंट बिस्मिल रहीम आज का हम लेक्चर स्टार्ट करते हैं ये मुझे बताएं कि आपको स्क्रीन शो हो रही है कम्प्लीटली असल में ना बहुत ज्यादा जोर लग रहा है नोट्स बनाने में कोई भी अवेलेबल अच्छी फॉर्मेशन में नोट्स नहीं है क्योंकि ऑनेस्टली स्पीकिंग जितनी कैंडमीज ने नोट्स बनाए हुए हैं उन्होंने जान के वो ना इंफॉर्मेशन स्टूडेंट तक इस तरह पहुंचने नहीं देते ऑर्गेनाइज था उनकी आपको जरूरत फील होती रहे तो तकरीबन मुझे को आठ सात आठ घंटे लग गए हैं ये डिफरेंट डाटा पढ़ के उसमें से नोट्स बनाते हुए ये जो अभी आपको मैं नोट्स दूंगा अभी भी वो कंप्लीट नहीं है अच्छा मैं आज आपको बता दूं आज हमने ना जो अप्रोच पढ़नी है ना हमने हम मेडिसिन को किस तरह पढ़ेंगे मेडिसिन इज ऑल अबाउट ओपनिंग योर विंडोज आपके दिमाग में बड़ा क्लियर होना चाहिए कि मेडिसिन को पढ़ने के लिए या मेडिसिन को क्वेश्चनिंग करने के लिए हमारे पास किस तरह की अप्रोच होनी चाहिए इट इज ऑल अबाउट ओपनिंग योर विंडो Uh, because uh, whenever you, you ask some question and there is a clue don't jump to other question ye bahut zaruri hai it's quite important in like in the medic medicine scenario whenever you are asking something and patient says something important for example the patient you 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 ask the patient uh, like uh, you are having shortness of breath you ask and he says yes okay you you need to explore that whatever is positive you need to explore that for example you ask the patient are you taking any medication sure he says like yes i'm taking medication which medication tell me more about your medication have you been taking it regularly for what you are taking it is are your symptoms under control with that medication so in the regarding the history taking part of the medicine it is important not only in the medicine always it is important whenever there is a window you have to stick to that window you have to keep yourself stick to that window at at the time okay so here here it comes today again i i am i'm just just briefly re, uh, revising your approach to towards the data gathering and starts with the grips like and then you will see the follow up or is the first presentation and uh, accordingly you will be asking four question if it is the follow up visit and then you will start taking hopi hopi you will complete your uh, stupa krs or stupa depending upon the symptom if it is the pain symptom it is stupa krs we have already talked about that and it if it is the non pain symptom it is the stupa you have completed that after that for example the patient say he is having pain he is saying like he is he is having shortness of breath you will ask have you taken anything for that have you taken anything for that for example if the patient has already taken some pain killer the patient is pain is not relieved you have not asked that and you will say i am giving you the paracetamol he is already taking the paracetamol if the symptom is not getting relieved then what is the purpose of giving you uh, giving the patient with the paracetamol or anything like that so you need to ask are you taking anything has that worked how are you feeling now you, these these are the kind of ips questions you need to ask whenever you are exploring some symptom then you will be asking tell me anything else and you will ask you will keep on repeating anything else until the patient says uh, like what or no whatever he says you will keep on asking open ended question exploring that patient says shortness of breath you explore the shortness of breath anything else says yes chest pain explore the chest pain anything else yes i am having the cough i am having the vomiting you need to explore that completely okay so when ever there is a window open don't leave that behind this is where we do the mistake for example there is our in our mind we need to complete the station however we we spend our time most of the time on irrelevant questions and we need to cut that time of the irrelevant question however whenever there is a window open whenever there is a window open just uh, just stay over there whenever there is a window open for we will be discussing in the scenarios later on and after that you will be asking about the dd dd is like all about your associated your suspected rule in and other possible causes to rule out the this is a most important thing to rule out because many time people ask rule in question for example you are suspecting a patient having mi you ask or shortness of breath you ask everything about the shortness of breath but you have not rule out the other causes the other possible causes It, if if you have ruled in the mi you have not ruled out the pericarditis you have not ruled out uh, for example uh, the trauma history you have not asked about any rash any shingle all that 
So you need to rule out the things as well. This is quite important in DD. DD carries two uh, things, rule in and rule out. So I'm telling you just because these things should be in your mind. Th that can be asked in any order. You can, for example, when you are asking some symptom, that is not in your mind that you are going to ask rule in first or rule out first. For example, the patient says, I, I, I want to explore, the, uh, tell you that what is that rule in and rule, rule out strategy. This is our my, my personal strategy, which I, I, I do while the data gathering and it is quite useful. For example, the patient is with a tiredness. I'm asking the, the questions, for example, okay, uh, how is your mood? The patient says the mood low, okay? If I, I, I need to ask all the questions then the, regarding the low mood. This is the window opening. Otherwise, for every DD, you will be asked one or two questions, maximum two questions, otherwise single is enough. However, if the window is open, then you need to explore that completely. This is quite important thing. This is where we lack. Actually, for example, I'm asking about the tired and a patient say, yes, I feel cold, whether they feel normal. Now the window is open, it is hypothyroidism. Now I need to ask all hypothyroidism questions, for example, uh, how is his skin, is, is his skin dry? Is he having the constipation? All that question that comes under the umbrella of that ruling question you need to ask. Otherwise, the rule of question are quite simple. You could be asking one or question, maybe maximum two questions. For example, fever and shortness of breath. This is the question you need to ask. And he's saying, no, 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 you keep on going. So this is again, I, I, I talked on the DD. Then again, it comes the red flag. Red flags are the cancer symptoms and the complication symptoms. Cancer and complication. With these terms, there comes some, some window in your mind. For example, DD, what is rule in, rule out? Red, what is the red flag? Flaw, cancer. It is the cancer symptom. It is the cancer symptoms, general cancer symptoms and particular complication of that disease you are ruling in. Okay? Then complete your history related to which we have the morning PMMA, Holly family, Desart, Restoli, and ICE. Complete that. And after that, observation, examination, then the management. Okay, I'm again going to repeat it for you, management part, because we are going to work in all medicine regarding your management in the same way. We are not going to change our strategy. It's going to be the same. It's going to imply on everything. For example, first of all, you will tell your decision, uh, sorry, for, first of all, you will disclose the diagnosis and explain it. What is explaining? For example, you say, uh, you say pericarditis. Patient will not be knowing about the pericarditis. You will be saying this is, this is the inflammation of the boundary of the heart. You will be saying in very simple words, disclosing and explaining. This carry one marks, then telling your decision. This is where we lack the most. We do not stick to telling our decision. We want to like throw our knowledge. First, after disclosing, tell your decision. We have talked about that. What is telling the decision? Well, it can be anything, sending home. It can be like keeping the patient indoor. It can be managing the patient, giving the oxygen. Whatever is your decision, just throw your decision first in a very good way. After that, tell the targeted management. That is the targeted management which, which everybody is like very eager to tell that. I'm, I, I want to share my knowledge with you. So here you will have the chance to share more knowledge in a very precise way. Just tell the targeted treatment. For example, after involving the senior, we will be doing your CT scan. We will be doing this and that. We will be confirming that. And then based on your thing we are having, we are going to treat you. Okay. Then the patient concern. The patient concern, keep in mind, if you have just disclosed your diagnosis, Patient can ask the concern. Never uh, they look at that. I have made that red and I'm going to bold it as well. Do, don't stick to your point. For example, I want, I have in my mind, okay, I have diagnosed this vestibular neuritis. I have these points in my head. I'm going to tell no. Just whenever the patient speaks, address the concern first. In the management part, especially, whenever the patient speaks, address the concern first, then come back to your approach later on. So this is in the red that this can this can be a cause of failure because this will uh, this will like portray you as templated. So you have to keep in mind you you will not present as templated. Okay, the patient says, "Doc, 
dog is this condition quite serious and you are just talking about the diagnosis you are not talking about the management you will address that first from my assessment your condition when the patient present like condition as you are having it is not the serious condition however we need to run a couple of tests if you are sure about if you are not sure about okay to tell you about that is serious or not we need to run a couple of tests it could be a serious condition it could be a simple first tell the simple condition it could be a simple condition like headache or it could be a very serious condition that could be meningitis however at the point i do not tell you with the certainty for that we need to run a couple of tests if you are if you are not sir so this is the concerned dressel so i am i am like reiterating that again and again because here in the data gathering the dd part is the problem always the dd part is the problem uh, and for, for why it is the problem because when the patient when the patient get the idea that this is the dd when the patient get the idea that this is the dd uh, this is the actual i have diagnosed the condition they leave asking the rule out questions never do that you cannot suppose the things you have to rule them out there can be two things there is a scenario we are going to read a shortness of breath scenario you are going to see that there are a lot of things if we are not asking all these questions we cannot pass the station i'm going to discuss that scenario with you uh, because uh, regarding that it is quite important okay then it is the long term management we have already talked about that in that we are going to do any prevention any advices any leave plan we want to do any safety netting this is the long term okay so uh, here we are going to talk about the three approaches together because they all of these scenarios can come with any of them the patient with pneumonia can say that okay i'm having chest pain the patient with pneumonia can present with chest pain can present with shortness of can present with cough so we in our approach in our medicine setting how we are going to deal we are going to go with the symptoms we are not going to go with the systems because whenever you are in the exam the patient says okay i'm having shortness of breath you don't know which, which area is the problem okay so which thing come in in my mind after you go inside the dormitory and outside the resident go and talk to the patient address his concern and when i go inside and introduce myself i say okay how may i uh, how can i help you the patient says okay i'm having shortness of breath so it cannot come in your mind it is a cardiology it is like uh, uh, the which area it is the cardiology it is the lung portion it is like the with the renal thing so you should know about your dd if you have a grip on your dd the history taking is quite easy we, we we will try to make it easy for you guys so that whenever th there comes any dd uh, any any symptom there comes some dds in your mind okay so i want to involve you people here before we we go and move forward tell me the everybody of you tell me four dds write down four dds of chest pain write that very fast okay because your inter, uh, your input is uh, quite important in these lectures so that mm, you get these thing memorized chest pain four dds write everybody am i in jaina pneumonia pericarditis okay very good pneumonia pericarditis mi pulmonary embolism okay nice very nice where are the others mi pericarditis pneumonia trauma very good very good pneumothorax okay pneumothorax is also the part of dd acs exactly acs is the better word we say mi or uh, angina because acs covers all so um, i think the acs the better word you, because in the dd acs should be in your mind pericarditis okay now tell me the dd is for sob shortness of breath shortness of breath right 4 dd each and each one you together right 4 4 dd pulmonary embolism exactly pneumonia tb come on asthma copd exactly na ah, great great lung cancer mesothelioma exactly mesothelioma is
Okay. Very well. You you people have described very well. Okay. Now, no come uh, exactly. You cannot forget the heart failure because it is one of our scenario as well. And there there is cough with the cough. What could be? Just 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 because these are very interlinked. That's why I want to teach these symptoms together because they are quite interlinked to each other. Regarding the cough, if the patient say I'm having the cough. Pneumonia, TB, COPD, all are like SOB and cough are almost same DDs. And similarly, chest pain can be associated with them. So, bronchiectasis is exactly okay. So, okay, let's let's come towards our approach. That how we we are going to do. We are not going to discuss honestly speaking regarding the part we have already discussed. We are going, I, I assume that these part we have already discussed and you are going to have grip, you do the practice again and again. Keep in mind the mnemonic we have made, please do not miss anything from them because if there are, especially in the SOB scenarios, you cannot miss even a single word. Even a travel history is important. Even the who you live with is important. How is affecting your life is important. Every question of the social aspect of the personal, the history aspect. For example, we have a mnemonic uh, uh, that is uh, uh, here. PMA Holly family Desa Restoli uh, AIC AIC is for like anything else and uh, ice is ice. Uh, like uh, okay, you you will not forget anything. These two scenarios, the first two scenario of the chest pain we have already done on the other day, and uh, uh, the uh, th these this is another scenario that patient. Have the chest pain, the patient information, and you will be asking your question. And regarding the management, we have already uh, asked about is uh, we have done this management as well. So this scenario has already been done. So we are going to move forward. For example, we will be complete here. Uh, the uh, OET part, OET part stands for uh, uh, our observation, examination, and test. We are going to name the test. They are going to tell us like this is the ECG. We are going to disclose it and skip short-term management and long-term management. We have was already talked about. We have done the case of pericarditis as well. Now we are going to do the test is pulmonary embolism. The pulmonary embolism scenario we are going to done. You are FY2 in emergency department. Miss Maria Lo. 45-year-old presented with shortness of breath and chest pain, take the history, discuss the management with her. For example, you will be starting after, after introducing yourself, you will be asking all the questions. You will explore the shortness of breath and you will be doing the chest pain. You will be doing uh, stupa, KRS, uh, stupa KRS and you will be doing the tupa of both. And for example, there is a very common question, for example, how to explore two symptoms together. Okay, what has brought you here today? She says, I'm having, I'm having problem with my breathing and I am having chest pain. He tell, he, for example, he tell, you will be starting asking one by one. Okay, regarding your shortness of breath, tell me since how long it's there, how it started, what are you doing when it started? Okay, uh, it's staying the same or it's getting worse. It's, it's always there or it, it's periodic. You will be asking all the questions and then you will be asking the other question regarding the chest pain. After exploring the chest pain, asking both anything else. Do you have anything else? The patient can say, yes, I'm having cough. Okay, can you relate your cough with these symptoms? You can ask this kind of open question, open and can you relate your cough with these kind, the, both of these symptoms so that if, if she can say, okay, this started like at the same time, this is the symptom and having the same pattern as the both of them. So it will save your time. Okay, so... Uh, this is the information of the patient is given whenever you you you, you are going to uh, patient info is the chest pain started few hours back and was sudden in onset continuous increase with breathing and seven by ten also sob started with the pain the pattern you you can explore the pattern no fever nausea and vomiting the history, has a history of breast cancer okay. For example, if this scenario comes and you are not asking about uh, 
are you diagnosed with any particular disease? You are not asking this question in the history. He's not going to tell you. Keep in mind. So the approach, you are going to stick with your approach until the patient disturbs it. The patient says something that is important to him. You are going to address that first and then come back to your approach again and underwent mastectomy. Okay, This comes in one thing in our mind. Okay? She had a cancer, underwent mastectomy. Diabetes and taking OCP. If you are not ask, going to ask anything like, like taking, are you taking any over-the-counter medication or any medicine? She's not going to tell you I'm taking OCPs. So you need to explore it. Don't, don't assume that patient is going to tell you. Patient is not going to tell you because here they have put in the patient's mind that the patient is presenting with shortness of breath and without asking these questions, you cannot reach there. Okay. After that, you, you ask all these questions and then uh, 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 and then afterward, you, you will be, uh, after asking initial question, you, you will be asking about uh, red flags, any weight loss, anything like patient presenting with you, you, you should ask about the red flag, loss of appetite, then asking about all these questions, uh, which are our uh, social history. And then we, you will be asking about, I'm going to, I need to take your observation, including this, this and that. Then they are going to tell you this saturation is low. Look at this here. The saturation is low. If the saturation is low, if they're giving you saturation low, so there, there must come something in your mind. Then why it is low? What I should do? Okay. Okay. After this, you have taken that and other scenario similar. This is another scenario. We are going to discuss both of them together so that you get have an idea how to do the interpretation of the knowledge. Second is the ch ch transgender with the pain. You are FY. Uh, this is the name. Chanela. Oliver, 24 year old, come to the hospital with chest pain. He's transgender transition from male to female. Talk to her. Okay. If you are not going to ask again these questions. Okay. Look, the, uh, the, uh, in these question, in this kind of question, there comes another approach which you are going to learn in the history station that uh, if the patient is talking you and is not comfortable in talking, you need to offer the confidentiality. Uh, and you also need to, uh, to give respect to that thing that is transgender because you cannot be judgmental in, in the talk. For example, keep in mind because our behaviors uh, are learned toward these kind of topics. They are not well learned that how to deal with these kinds. So you need to be very cautious about these kind of topics because this is part of their society. So uh, we need to give a proper consideration to that. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. The, uh, uh, the patient has the left-sided chest pain. This is the, this is this patient's information. Few hours back, the sitting, when he was sitting started, suddenly in onset, continuous increase on breathing, the pain increase on breathing. Okay. And seven by 10, also as SOB, we started with pain, no fever, nausea and vomiting patient has a leg pain in the leg as well. Look at this. If we are not going to ask anything else, patient is not going to tell. Do you have any other problem? Maybe patient is not still going to tell, but you need to ask a close-ended question in the ruling out the DD. Whenever we know where there's a shortness of breath and these kind of things, we ask a question, uh, is, is there pain in your leg to reload the DD? If you, and we are not, this patient is going through DVT with pulmonary embolism. So if we, we, we can miss this in the leg pain. So we need to stick with our approach. Has a history of breast CA under, no, this is, uh, this is the other scenario you came here. This is not there. Taking spiral lactone estrogen, for the last six months. Here comes a very important thing I want to tell you because in this scenario, it is very common that you ask, are you taking ever over the counter medication? What patient do? Uh, doc, is that really important to tell you about that? Why? Because in, there's not only one scenario, it can be another scenario as well. In, in this scenario, I want to particularly want you people to learn about it that if you ask are you taking any medication the patient say uh doc is that really important to tell okay you need to offer the confidentiality 
here you need to make the patient comfortable if the patient says like that and you start on saying yes uh, uh, yes please please tell me what medication are you taking this is not the good way you need to offer the confidentially that is ips okay uh, is there any particular thing that is worrying you mr johns or what's his name or oliver actually doc uh, i don't want to disclose it well i'm here i'm your doctor whatever will you and me will be talking will be remain between you and our team nobody will know about that be sure about that you can talk it to me whatever it is okay then the patient is going to disclose okay i'm actually having the estrogen okay i'm going to i am having the estrogen actually i'm i was prescribed the estrogen and i'm i'm taking that more than the required dose this can be the answer or this can be the answer actually doc i'm i am i i want to go for gender uh, transformation and i have i had a booked uh, meeting with i i was get not getting the appointment so that i started on my own patient can say that and this is the scenario these kind of changes they can make in this scenario they they, they want to learn your judgment so here come you need to offer the confidentiality and the patient will open to you so this can come anywhere you need to, to leave your strict approach and uh, enter into the patient approach that can be anywhere How, okay so in this scenario in the transgender pain scenario you need to ask the patient question to to get the patient open to you okay then again the third scenario is sob with pulmonary embolism you are fy2 angela uh, 34 year old has presented with complaint with complaint of breathlessness talk to the patient and discuss with the dd with the patient okay can can the patient information can breathe properly however comfortable in talking for example this is quite important because you are going to ask that okay what has brought you doc actually i can't breathe i can't breathe properly okay so what you are going to offer here okay are you are you comfortable in talking i should i give you oxygen doc i'm in a pain doctor i'm having a lot of pain in my chest okay let let me ask you a question but tell me if you are uh, are you comfortable in talking okay no, I, i can let me ask a few more question maybe i can offer you what is in the best interest of you you can hold um, pain killer for some time but the oxygen you need to offer at once okay so started few hours ago and was sitting and was continuous this is the common the sharp pain this is can't breathe properly sharp pain with breathlessness increase in breathing the pain frequency is increasing with the breathing has a family history of clot formation and taking ocp she is taking ocp she is taking ocp okay so you again look at that in the pulmonary embolism the social history is quite important because there is no clue if if we have got the pulmonary embolism patient there is no clue in the uh, history taking except like dvt if there is a dvt we can have a clue in pain in the leg otherwise there is no clue all clues are in our history social medical history sometimes it is the cancer medical history sometimes mastectomy taking estrogen medical history taking ocp medical history mother having clot formation history family history so you, we th these are these things are quite important so any long travel history you going to ask though they, they can say yes or not but you need to ask long travel history in this kind of scenario okay uh, we have read three scenarios and we are going to develop an approach how to approach this kind of patient this can be the shortness of breath this can be the chest pain this can be the both of them so pulmonary embolism scenario that's why i i try to uh, like uh, teach you the approach uh, uh, that is Uh, in the combination not separate approach like i i uh, if the patient is in the chest pain no we we keep our window open we we need to keep our windows open so that whatever the patient comes we can reach towards our diagnosis okay so here again after asking fondness of breath history taking uh, his uh, hopi of uh, um, uh, pain 
we are going to jump towards our DD. And in DD, again, we are going to ask the questions uh, regarding first question. Uh, we are going to ask about the MI because the most dangerous if the chest pain or breath, shortness of breath, but we are going to ask um, uh, any nausea, any vomiting, okay? And pain is going anywhere else. We, we have already asked. And then we, we are going to ask other uh, is pericarditis question. Then we've got pneumonia question. Do you have any fever? Because any flu-like symptom before any fever, you need to ask these questions. So rule out your DD. If you have done, because you, you have done 4DD, you have ruled out the 4DD and you do not get anything, don't worry about that. The clue will be outside that. Or even if you do not get that, don't worry about that. You can pass these stations without knowing exact diagnosis. This is for sure. This is for sure. Okay. So you ask 4DD question. Nothing comes out, okay? You keep on asking your, or maybe maximum five questions, and sometimes you can go for the systemic inquiry. What is the systemic inquiry? Uh, it's a simple, you start from the brain, uh, like any, any headache, any photophobia, this is the systemic inquiry, any ear discharge, any abdominal pain, vomiting, uh, any shortness of breath, this is I'm doing the systemic inquiry. Start from the head, and going towards the toe. This is the system inquiry. If, if, you, if you have enough time and you can ask these questions, you can ask these questions. Uh, and any bleeding, any part rectum bleeding, start from the head, going towards the toe. This is systemic inquiry. One question for each system, one question for each com most common question. You can make your own systemic inquiry because it is very much written in our notes that do the systemic inquiry. Whenever, what is the systemic inquiry? Ask single question from every system is your single inquiry and this will sometimes it will carry marks to you because they will see that you are struggling but i have asked four questions regarding the dd nothing is coming out i can go for the systemic inquiry directly okay ask the rapid questions four to five to six questions rapidly and then i can go towards my uh, uh, though though even even there will nothing come out in your systemic inquiry they will still give you marks because the marks are for your struggle not with your knowledge keep in mind you are struggling in your data gathering they will give you the marks okay uh, after that you will you will say that okay uh, these are the three scenarios we have read that uh, and after doing that all uh, Ruling out the red flag, regarding the red flag, you will be asking the questions uh, regarding uh, the cancer symptoms. We have already talked about in OET, I would like to take your general physical, uh, your, uh, your vitals. Your... Uh, this is not the good line actually. I'm just, I'm just mentioning it. I, I would like to take your observation, your blood pressure, your heart rate, temperature, and your respiratory rate. And I would like to do your general physical examination and examination of your chest. Because it is now it is compulsory and examination of your legs. You will say that in this scenario, you will say that examination of your chest, examination of your legs. Okay. And we will be doing uh, your baseline investigation, your CBC, your ABG, your uh, ABG, your uh, x ray. Uh, the third thing is x ray and your ECG. We, we cannot assume that the patient comes with the shortness of breath that he cannot have uh, acute MI. He can have acute MI with shortness of breath. So we are going to do ECG and send for prop proper. Okay. So these are the approach. This is the approach you need to proper knee. Okay. You need to learn that whenever you, what DDs ever you have in your mind, you you need to rule out them in your investigations as well or in your examination. Now come toward the management plan part. Okay, you will say from what you have told me and from your examination, I suspect that you have a condition called pulmonary embolism. This condition is the clot form in your veins of your lung and block the veins. We could, however, do some investigation to confirm this. This is your disclosing. And you can say as you came with the this and that, you should say that actually, because I'm not writing this because we have already mentioned that. But this, while disclosing your diagnosis, you should keep, make this your habit that whenever you are disclosing your diagnosis, you, you should say that. 
okay because in this scenario we can say that as you are taking estrogen for for the uh, and there's overtaking dose of this for the last six months and you have history of this as well so i suspect that you are a condition called pulmonary embolism the rest is the same then what could be your decision okay this is what making me a long of time lot of time because i am making your notes in that way how you have to approach because you you go to any notes you will not see that they have done this time kind of work okay this after disclosing your diagnosis then tell your decision so what can be the decision o2 is low you have seen the o2 is low so if you have not already given the oxygen you will say admit you and give you oxygen by a non repetitive mask and will give you morphine for the pain relief as well okay we will anticoagulate we will give you anticoagulant stop blood clot this is the part of your like management these three things are part of your decision making not the other management okay now come towards the targeted management okay why i why i am separating this because whenever you go for the management part there come some question in your mind so that you can answer by for example disclosing or after disclosing i i need to give my decision what is the decision i need to keep this patient admitted i need to keep the patient under observation i need to give this and that at once without like without even like having a second thought in my mind okay then comes the second thought i need to ask my senior we will check your blood dimers level and a special test for this condition we might plan ctpa and we also need to do the ecg if the already you have not mentioned that you can mention it here because you need to rule out the things we will give we will give you anticoagulant okay this we have already done that we have already done that over there without any waiting for anything we have already given the on the suspicion we have already given the because the diagnosis of pulmonary embolism is the clinical one so after doing that we cannot wait for the ctpa that it comes confirm and then we will start our that's why the target would be if the test confirm the pulmonary embolism you will continue on the anticoagulant for at least 5 days and we will also then we will anticoagulate you Uh, for at least six month, it can be uh, three month. It can be six month if the cause is unknown. If the cause is known, it is three month. Otherwise, it is six month. So you will mention we will at least anticoagulate you on warfarin. You can name the warfarin uh, anticoagulant tablet for. Okay, here uh, I want to tell you that you need not to be very specific. For example, if if you say here we will be giving you anti. Uh, coagulant it could be like uh, nova coagulants it could be um, low molecular heparin any any could be so if you have said the anticoagulant it's enough however here you can mention anticoagulant name warfarin but again here you can even use that anticoagulants as well so uh, you, without naming that it is enough for you because you are telling the patient patient uh, is is another thing how to take that we will be having another meeting with that okay then the patient concern why i get that okay you you just read that you just read that in the notes why i get that it is because, because of the targeted what the patient is having why i get that because it is the two separate question to separate i have put that on the same because there are three scenario we are discussing together can anything else it can be for that we need to investigate that the patient can ask these question anywhere if you have just open the diagnosis patient can start asking the concern you need to address that concern leave anything behind okay if you have disclosed the diagnosis patient start keep on asking the question that is good that take it as a good that patient is getting involved by himself that your session is going to pass okay you just keep on answering the patient question in the end the time is up or the patient there is a little time behind you just do the safety netting that's it because you have already tell the because he will be asking about the treatment okay if he is not asking about the treatment then you will you you will st again start on your approach that okay you need to i we need to admit you and this and that however if the patient ask about the concern you you should address the concern first okay okay then the long term while the sending patient at home this is what i had have from the website of nhs just give a good read to it because it could be the patient concern among them just have a good read of it that after sending home what are the prevention you need to do for example the patient is not speaking he is not asking any concern 
you have done the treatment you have told about the long target treatment now come for the long term third heading our fourth heading long term in the long term the first thing should come in your mind is prevention okay this has happened what what prevention because in the target we do prevention we do the long term management we do the safety netting we do uh, uh, the lifestyle modification this is all in long term okay of oh, okay if it is the prevention heading what you need to do is all this like drink water make sure you have penalty of room um, walking and all that keep your side mobile is is uh, similarly not to do and this is the safety netting safety netting cgp if you feel this however if uh, i think that you just keep an, i i don't think so this is for you just uh, this safety netting you just remember that okay and this is i have this is i have just put certain headings just for the reading purpose because you should examiner might ask otherwise they they generally do not ask you just read this is the well score and how it is done just read that this you, you need not to discuss just just for your reason easiness because whenever you are like there comes some time and it it kills your time you go and search for this thing that's why i have put that here okay okay now we come toward another scenario that is the muscle musculoskeletal chest pain musculoskeletal chest pain trust me if we do not ask about the trauma this is the same the patient say i am having chest pain over here i am having chest pain in my left side what will come in your mind am i you will not have the musculoskeletal pain in your mind yes if you do not ask those questions it get better with anything it get worse with anything patient say whenever i do cycling it get worse patient say whenever i do exercise it get worse the chest pain can the mi angina pain can present with the same symptom it can worse when cycling okay so you need to explore each and everything when it get better when i take rest and jana can be better with the rest okay let's let's read the information regarding the patient information central pain started few days back okay first look few days back it's not that acute when sitting gradual in onset it's gradual because the chest pain with mi is mostly sudden in onset continuous dull pain because Uh, it can be dull worsen by on cycling taking and taking deep breath and taking deep breath on cycling this is giving some information taking on taking deep breath it is worsening it is giving some information about this pain fell down by the bike three days ago like do not uh, other thing is normal apart from that there is no other clue they are going to give you okay again you start with your dd you will not leave anything trust me other day we were doing the scenario you were having the trouble like asking question too rapidly later on when these question will be on your tips like this okay you should know i'm uh, trust me i do not remember now the mnemonics i i just know after this question which question i have to ask okay you will reach and with the one month preparation you can reach to that thing that you will be asking question like in a rapid way you need to ask you need not repeat your question ask in a rapid way okay where is the pain where exactly it is can you can you put your finger on it okay uh, after it's how long it is there how did it started what were you doing when it started staying the same it's getting worse not in that speed i'm asking but that should be in your mind in with that speed Okay. Again, after for uh, the complete the history PMA Holly family. This why I I I talk these mnemonic again again so that you can have the memory. You can have the memory of this. That's why I I ask them again and again. What uh, uh, it is stupa KRS stupa for pain and non pain. And it is complete your history PMA Desa Tolly PMA Holly family Desa Tolly and AIC so that. about this mnemonic will be around half of your station of the plan so th this will help you a lot okay then oet i would like to take check your examination keep in mind what the patient the most important thing the patient do in this station and that is the wrong thing they do not offer this this thing 
so i'm 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 going to do it the red because you assume that okay i have found that it is the chest pain coming from the muscle be safe doctor be safe doctor we it is not uh, uh, we have to go with the being the safe doctor we cannot take any blame on us okay the patient was fell down and he was really having chest pain musculoskeletal chest pain but he was he was having am i along with that and we have not do, done this okay we will be doomed in the real uh, uh, exactly if, if if you are working over there and the patient comes in this way you are 100% sure this is a musculoskeletal pain you will be doing these tests also so you will name these tests that's why we are learning these approaches together okay come forward from my assessment there is nothing like extra i need to ask speak about that everything is, will be staying the same the chest pain is the musculoskeletal it is called uh, costochondritis it is the and you will explain it disclose and explain okay okay i i do them Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, actually, I <laughs> I muted myself. I think as well. Okay. Uh, here come again telling the decision and after uh, the disclosing and explaining, disclosing and explaining. Then decision. Your decision is that I'm I'm going to this this condition is like not a dangerous. We are going to send you home, and with that we are going to give you certain lifestyle modifications, and we are give you. Give you NSAIDs or paracetamol. Whenever you are prescribing NSAID, do tell the patient that we are going to give you PPI covers as well. Okay, you will carry mark for this. Then the concern: the patient will be asking the concern. I'm worried. This is a heart attack. So you will be explaining that yes, this condition can be heart attack. However, this, this, from my assessment, this does not look like a heart attack. However, we will be running some tests to uh, rule out the condition in any way. Okay. So you will tell this to patient that we are conducting the test to rule out. However, from my assessment, it is not hard to die. Then you will be targeted like uh, you are sending the patient home. What, what target should come in mind? This is the management you are sending the patient home on and said, these are uh, the lifestyle modification you need to uh, tell the patient uh, that you need to do these all kind of the, like this is aggravated by doing exercise. So leave doing exercise for some time. You can use the ice pack. You can avoid the, uh, the thing that avoid uh, that, that exacerbate that. Okay. So this is this kind of targeted therapy. You are telling the patient while sending and then uh, there uh, it can be targeted risk can be long-term, whatever you put, because this is actually the long-term management. You are telling the patient sending home. Then the safety netting, if developed, you are doing the safety netting for uh, uh, MI, okay? You know how to do the safety netting for MI. Then there comes another scenario. That is the pain with herpes zoster. 
the patient jp with the chest pain again with the chest pain it is not with the rash patient say i am having the chest pain okay look at how many scenario can come with the chest pain the patient is telling i am having the chest pain then again the chest pain on the right side gradually in onset burning dull 5 out of 10 okay this is all the information of the patient you if you going to ask about anything else again and again he will say yes i am having the rash as well okay if the rash opens we are going to have a complete class on a rash you know maybe me or dr shiraz is going to have a complete class on the rash because the rash there are almost 15 scenario 10 to 15 15 scenario on the rash only on the skin so whenever there comes a rash the window opens itching you will be asking about the itching you will be asking about the pain you will be asking about the spread since how long it is you will take the complete history of rash that rash history is its own history similarly vomiting history is its own history jaundice history is its own history so how we will be learning these we will be learning small histories and then we will be like uh, 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 the history of pregnancy is history baby history is history you have to do the pump do you have to all that so rash you will take the rash history rash history what is the rash history i have put certain question but you will be doing in much detail in the rash class any burning tingling numbness itching in the skin did you come into contact with same type of lien okay it is the rash you know you need to ask this question again is there a, like is there anybody else is having the same symptom near home are you have you contacted to somebody having the same symptom do you have the skin lien anywhere else is telling you one lien you need to ask other lien as well okay the skin lien on your face eye or ear you need to ask this as well have you okay no you have got in your mind is the chicken pox have you got the chicken pox before he will say no okay or he will say yes he will say yes or no it, it, it depends he can tell you about that then rule out uh, this is the rule in strategy any headache now you know this is some kind of you know about that it is uh, shingle no rule in headache because it is the prodom symptom most of the time this occurs with this kind of rash feeling being generally unwell high temperature all these questions are to rule in that then how to rule out then you will be asking all questions again starting from mi like uh, pericarditis any any pneumonia and all the questions you will be asking okay these are the rule out questions of dd why i have divided rule and and rule out dd because i know that because the people usually forget to ask these that's why uh, this strategy i, I am combining the strategy of uh, like uh, history taking uh, history strategy telling asking about the history however i am splitting this because i want this you to never forget because in the medicine scenario only the two things are the problem no other problem one is dd the second is management there is no other problem if you have the complete grip on these two things dd other thing are the same you will have a very subtle changes only management and dd management and dd for me if you ask the medicine is the management and dd that's it other thing you will learn in couple of days yeah you know everything okay then oit in in you will ask general physical examination and you will say i will i would like to take uh, to examine the wound uh, the examine the lesion the examine the rash what is the rash to, i would like to examine the rash i will do the general physical exam you look if there is a rash anywhere else in your body okay okay keep in mind in this scenario never never forget to take these kind of history whenever you have certain things are particular certain things are particular this thing is particular to this scenario what is this whenever you are taking history like you are asking a history question uh, like pmma holy family de satoli ask about immunosuppression particularly ask about the immunosuppression because this will carry marks talk about look for pregnancy around is there anybody pregnant around you because you can pass this to that and that could be very fatal to the baby born okay the third thing is asking about the less than 1 year old you need to ask these two question 
Are you taking any? Because you need to ask any immunos. Are you taking any immunosuppressant therapy? Any steroids? Okay. Age. You you going to know about the age by the age. You need not to ask. But regarding the immunosuppressant status, you need to ask why. Because later on, patient is going to ask these concerns, and you have not taken in the history. You cannot ask the question, cross question over there. This is very much important thing I'm telling you. The thing you have not about asked about the history. The patient asks, okay, doc. Do you do I have uh, the chance of passing this to my nep uh, to my nephew? Okay. So, okay. How you will be asking that? Is your nephew pregnant? This seems bad if you are asking cross question over there. So, okay. If if the question is that if this happens, you can ask. But this is not the good way. You need to ask here in the history section. You need to ask here. You know, present history and. Around contact history, immunosuppressant and contact history. You need to ask. This is very particular about the shingle case. Why? Because the patient later on is going to ask the question to you. Okay. Then when you will be asking about, I need to examine your chest and the uh, rash. They are going to give you this picture. If you are not going to ask, they are not going to give you the picture. And you will assume the thing, and you you can lose your marks. Okay. Management from my assessment. Uh, you might be having the skin lesion cause shingle. The shingle is the blister, painful. Okay, and most of us get this in our life. This is all that is its explanation. Most of that get shingle in our life, and uh, this can be reactivated and in the form in in certain condition. Immunosuppressant. For example, the patient is on the immunosuppressant therapy, and you haven't asked about the immunosuppressant therapy. Any uh, on the steroid therapy? How you could answer? Dog, why I get this? Or you will say that why you get this? You can you can elaborate this by telling them the chance of having this. Why? Because you have the risk factors. So always ask, explore that in the history. Okay. So what is your? It is not a what is your decision? No, it is not a serious condition. I'm sending you home with the device. So these all all the devices. There is no cure. The treatment is the symptomatic. You will give the emollients. You will give. the pain killer for the pain relief and you can uh, 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 like the paracetamol if the paracetamol is not improve you can giving the the neuroleptic treatment uh, gabapentin you can use that but i have not written that because the, they they do not generally want to listen about that they just want to listen about your simple approach however you should know that okay the pain is not getting relief with the paracetamol what i can do i can um, i can go for the Carbamazepine, I can neurolep, uh, neuroleptic, uh, the gabapentin. Okay, uh, these are you can go for them. Keep uh, other. These are the uh, these are the devices you are going to give to the patient for the self care. Okay, calamine lotion you can use and all that. You you please read that uh, because this this depend upon your reading. I most of the things I have brought uh, them from. Uh, I have copied them from the NHS side. For you guys, because literally in the many notes there are wrong treatments given there. They have given a lot of data, and the patient asks some question, and student really uh, students don't know how to answer these questions. So because they are asking about the approach, not asking about the knowledge. They are not asking about tell me the four line of management of asthma. They are not going to ask this. They are going to never ask you about that. They are going to judge you. Okay. The patient will ask, okay, okay, doc, if if I do not, you, you tell the treatment, okay, I'm going to give you the painkiller. That's enough. If the patient is not going to ask, okay, doc, what do if I do not get? If the examiner want to judge you, they will ask. If they do not want to judge you, you do not become self scholar. Do not keep on saying, okay, I'm going to tell you the second line of management. Then I'm going to tell you the third line of management. No, no, this is wrong. This is completely wrong. okay you can offer the antiviral medication but there is a condition when to prescribe the pen medication some people with the shingle also prescribe okay if the this is not resolving you can prescribe but this is not the common thing otherwise then it comes the patient concern it is the contagious one this is written in some notes very wrong i have read this from the this is from the nhs website it is not possible to catch single single from someone with the chicken pox you cannot get the shingle this is written in their website however it is possible for someone 
who has fever, she can pass to catch it from someone with shingles. Okay. They say if you if you have asked, that's why that is the important questions. That if the someone is having already the chicken pox, he cannot get shingle from you. The shingle can be get if the other person has never had chicken pox. Okay. Then again, the general advice is and do the safety netting for meningitis and encephalitis. Do the safety netting for meningitis and encephalitis. So what is this photophobia, neck pain, fever? Okay, you will do the safety netting because this can lead to in very rare things. Okay. That, uh, okay, that, this station is done here because they, it will take a lot if I read all this to you guys. You just go and read these kind of because I have just copied and pasted it in an organized way here so that you can read that easily. That what general devices you are going to give. Okay, the other scenario is with the heart failure. Uh, the safety netting for uh, actually encephalitis and meningitis uh, both have the same symptom. However, there is a focal neurological deficit in encephalitis sometimes and there is a confusion. These both two symptoms make the encephalitis separate from the meningitis. But you can ask one of them if you feel confused, if you have the confusion. So encephalitis uh, uh, is a bit uh, different from meningitis. Otherwise, th both of them carry very much similarities. Encephalitis carries to do things like high grade fever can be in both. However, in encephalitis, there can be confusion, there can be delirium, there can be like brain will involve in it, no? and there can be some focal neurological deficit as well sometimes. Is that clear, uh, Dr. Frost? Okay. Uh, then comes heart failure. The heart failure scenario, it is okay. And uh, no, we are going to do a little bit. I, I, I think you are, you people are bored now because we are talking about the same thing again and again. Because I want you to go through the approach. Approach. Trust me, I, it took me at least like eight to nine hours to bring all these notes here because it's a lot of work. Because there is no good source. If you people have some good source, please send it to me because but, but it will bring my work down because there are I have seen two nodes and one is with the Samsung nodes are quite irregular and they are telling very little information so that the people do not know about uh, what is the right thing and there is another approach uh, aspire nodes he uh, I should not mention the name of them because he they are telling everything because you you will not get any approach by reading the management of that that's why I need to read all that and I need to extract that and then I put here. That's why otherwise I, I could have teach you much more station, but it took me like eight to nine hours to develop these kind of notes for you guys. Okay. Um, then comes, uh, it is the shortness of breath. The patient is presented with the hospital with shortness of breath. David Parker, 59 year old. Referred by GP MI seven years ago. That's good. They give you the information. But if they do not give you this information, you need to ask. And most of the time, they do not give you this information. It is very much clear. If if this is the, the scenario is there, they not give you that clear scenario. Okay. So you need to ask these questions. Patient is not regular with GP. Uh, uh, and they, this will not. They will not never disclose this to you because this is about the patient information. They will not disclose this to you. Maximum, uh, the scenario will be this. Okay. Okay. Now we read regarding the patient scenario so that we can be discussing. Uh, they will not give you the patient any disinformation. This is, uh, we, I have brought this information for you guys to know about the scenario. When you are going to practice, the other person should know about the information who is practicing with you and the information the other person will get from here. The patient presented with the the last few weeks with shortness of breath, which was from the last few weeks, and when climb the stair, it is getting worse and worse when taking few steps. Rest makes it better. Wake up middle of the night, and you will be asking the question, what's making is better, what's making is worse. They are going to tell this to you. 
He'll tired all the time. Leg swelling is there. Okay. You are asking any other symptom, they are going to tell the leg swelling. Okay. Uh, if you do not ask about that, you need to ask by yourself in the DD. Are you having the, the ruling question? It is in the ruling question. If they do not tell you, actually, the ruling question are they, when you ask, tell me more. And they say, okay, I'm having shortness of breath. Tell me more. I am having nausea. Tell me more. I'm having leg swelling. If they do not tell you that, you need to ask this. And this is your ruling. This is your ruling strategy. Okay. You need to ask these swelling of the leg because if you are get the idea, this is the shortness of breath. The first thing coming in your mind is the swelling of your leg. Uh, if you are get, getting it because of the heart failure. Okay. Racing of heart for a few weeks. This is I'm going to highlight it for you guys. This, this thing I'm going to highlight it because these kind of symptom patient you usually tell and you ignore in the management. This is very common thing. Really. Because your focus is only on heart failure and they have told you something that is relevant to that however not that thing for example patient saying i'm having racing of heart you ask you ask about the episode in and everything however when you go to them sometimes people do not ask about they say okay this is an associated symptom i'm not going to explore because you have to manage this as well the patient is having sleeping problem patient is having shortness of breath patient is having depression you need to solve all, all of these queries here, the problem is with shortness of breath and the problem is again with uh, and other part of the problem is with racing of heart. Why? It, it could be atrial fibrillation. Patient is saying it could be atrial fibrillation because atrial fibrillation is very common associated with uh, uh, heart failure. Okay? He had a heart attack and he's taking medication and in this problem, in this scenario, I'm going to highlight this for you guys because you need to explore this thing. If you are not exploring this thing, you, your scenario will not pass. This is quite easy scenario, but, but nobody will not know about this scenario when asking about the question. You will know at your very first, this is the heart failure scenario. However, you can miss these type of things. You will not ask about the compliance. Well, okay, are you suffering from any medical condition? Yes, I had a heart attack. I'm sorry to hear about that. When? I had this seven years ago, how that was treated, what you are taking since then, what you've been told, are you uh, doing your routine checkups with your GP, are you taking your medication, what medication they gave you, you take them on time, you did them daily, this, this is what I said, I, I will, uh, certain are Punjabi people over there, I will use some time for this to keep you in your memory, Manji Dana. So, whenever you find something fishy, Stay there. Okay, this is like the patient is heart failure. What should come in your mind? I need to rule out the cause. How you will can rule out the cause? With this manji dana. With this staying on that thing really will save you. If you like just looked it upon like you said, okay, but uh, are you suffering from any other medical condition? Yes, I had a heart attack. Okay. Um, any hospital stay? Yes, I stayed at that time in the hospital. Any other hospital say no. Any allergy? No. Any family history? No. Like, you have missed that part because in the end, they are going to ask you, the patient is, and you will, then, then you will, you cannot answer. Okay, doc, can you please tell me what happened to me? Why this has happened to me? And then you will say, this is very common complication of heart attack and this is actually his reason was having a heart attack and after that he was not compliant and you have not digged it in you have not explored that and your station will be either failed because of the templated approach or because of the lack of approach okay so uh, these kind of easy scenarios are more difficult because they demand you to explore that more so keep in mind, don't stay easy. If you find in, in your first like stupa question or in your uh, stupa RS or stupa question, if you find out the cause, don't keep yourself easy. This is where we get the wrong and we find this condition and then we want to jump towards the management and we, we lost a lot of things and that are quite important. And then uh, we get our exam result and then we say, Actually, I done very good station and I was very much sure that this was, uh, I cannot fail this station. Actually, this is the reason when 
the station which are easy and we reach very quickly and in the medicine and that get they get fail because of this trust me this is common thing and don't you you just try to like avoid this try this again and again and you will know about actually make it thinking like a patient concern it's the patient concern it's the patient prime important thing okay okay then they will give you this when you will be asking about uh, temperature uh, are like type the observation they can give you news chart i have shown you the picture of news chart what is the news chart and you can google by yourself news chart they can give you the picture of news chart in any of these scenarios like the pulse is this respiration is this and whenever keep in mind the rule are the same whenever the patient say the uh, her uh, uh, f uh, o2 is below 92 below 92 91 90 you will ask a question that is the universal question are you, uh, do you have smoker cough of copd if you need to ask this question this will carry marks this will tell that you you are an approach doctor you are not a like time related doctor he says okay i am having uh, my shortness i am having shortness of breath and, and a, the uh, saturation level is 987 you will ask again the question why because you need to change the mod below 88 we do not give the oxygen to the copd patient and other patient the cut line is 92 however if it is even below that the 88 we will give another way of oxygen which is the 4 liter oxygen not the 15 liter oxygen okay so this question is in provide it is important i'm telling you but uh, i'm i'm sorry i i i i want an interpretive approach sometimes i am mixing the things actually i want you to do these mixing of things as well because if we do not learn how to be in an interpretive way we cannot do good in the medicine stations okay uh, then the patient concern these are the patient concern what is heart failure and all that why my heart is enlarged you 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 your heart is enlarged because you have not been taking this medication regularly and that could cause the heart remodeling and uh, because of that there was a constant strain on your heart and uh, that that made your heart look like in large okay what you are going to do that and this is the treatment option how you are going to treat the heart failure okay again come towards the dd uh, the patient is with shortness of breath you will what could be the dd okay write your dds patient with shortness of breath you have already i think you have already uh, written that shortness of breath dd so we will be asking all that dd starting from chest pain um, uh, rule in question because shortness of breath for us proven otherwise is mi and we will be asking the rule in question or, or until they have told you some very good clue because we uh, in otherwise the patient with heart failure can present with mi as well okay can have mi you will be starting from the mi pericarditis asking uh, all the questions uh, like trauma you will be asking all the questions related uh, to our S shortness of breath approach and uh, like am i approach uh, chest pain if is telling the chest pain you are asking the chest pain questions as well okay so here comes the red flag you will be asking the red flag question you will ruling out the cancer here the red flag could be its complications as well what could be the complication it is you have already asked that in other way because he he will be telling you about the complication of uh, while you will be doing your hopi i would like to check your and like to take the ecg and cardiac enzyme and you will be doing all the same you have done for your mi patient because initially then from my assessment you are part of heart failure this means your heart is not pumping properly because of that the fluid accumulate in your peripheral of the lung you, you, this you have disclosed it and we did an x ray x ray this these finding that's your you will be because you will mention that in this oet part that you are going to do an x ray and ecg and you will be explaining the if they give you the result you will be explaining this to the patient after doing that you will tell your decision what is decision we will keep you till your symptom improve 
in your hospital will give you oxygen and before giving the oxygen you have to ask about the same question i have told you about the copd medication you will give here the furosemide the medication you will to uh, like uh, lower the water in the lung okay the you will give the furosemide so that breathing can be improved so decision is to do the first symptomatic treatment and you will be sending for the test for anemia liver function kidney function test you will be doing the lung function test as well and you will uh, okay this is doubling then in the targeted what you will mention you will be doing okay we, i will involve the card this scenario is very important and this is for me it is difficult scenario because there are a lot of information to tell in this scenario so it seems like it is easy scenario but when you, you will be doing that Uh, it will be taking you a lot of energy i'm i'm sending you the cardiac department for a I, i'm sending a call in the cardiac department they will come and do a special test called echo you cannot do by yourself you have to call the cardiologist echo for echo and they will that is the ultrasound of your heart and we ecg monitoring we will see the rhythm and rate why this is important because he has mentioned you in his history i am having is heart beating racing as well so you you want to check here the heart rating and you will give you can give the halter monitoring as well. we will can give you they can give you some device okay halter monitoring uh, i don't know here they can give you or he need to take it from the gp i think he need to take it from the gp because in this scenario you need to mention the halter monitoring because you do not we will not be saying the halter monitoring you will be saying they can give you some device and you will record that 24 hour rhythm of your heart and will bring back okay because heart racing is there you need you want to check what is what heart racing is that that is skipping of beat what it is that because you cannot make sure until unless in the ecg you done the ecg and there there is irregular rhythm and this is telling that is having atrial fibrillation they will give review your medication and because you have not been keen to your medication because he was non compliant and hopefully your condition will get better if it is not get better they may need to do some heart procedure this is i don't think so this is necessary i don't think so this is not necessary you this is long term long term you will mention the cardiac rehabilitation look at this i have made it again bold because cardiac rehabilitation is important because now he is he needs cardiac rehabilitation what is that you need to refer you will refer that to the cardiac rehabilitation programs are there which which include exercise moderate exercise education relaxation and emotional support so this is your safety net this is your long term management and you will carry marks for that look we are working on our four heading what decision yeah explanation decision targeted and long term long term is long term comes with the cardiac rehabilitation and safety netting and lifestyle modification you will tell the lifestyle modification and again in the end safety netting for mi safety netting for mi okay now we have done with the sob and mi and the chest pain scenario we have done with them no related to that there comes an other class of scenarios that is cough scenarios okay that that is related to that like but a bit different his dd is different his way is different his way of dealing is a bit different but this is related to that we will be using that knowledge as well and we will be continuing with our dry cough okay the first dry cough scenario is with let me see what is it is okay this is very important scenario i i want you to learn this scenario because if you know how to deal with this scenario trust me you can deal with any of the medicine scenario any this is the very prototype of the difficult medicine scenario in which patient uh, in which students or doctors get confused because they are telling you a lot of information while you taking history if you have not done this already in multiple time you you will doubt yourself in this scenario you will doubt yourself i'm not taking history code even if you have very strong grip of the history why it is so 
because the patient has a lot of problem, actually they want to ask about the DD. They do not want to ask about your diagnosis approach. They want to know about your DD approach. In this scenario, you will learn how to deal with the DD approach, not with a diagnosis approach, okay? You are FY2 in the emergency 70 year old, come with a cough, few months, please talk to the patient, take his test, discuss the diagnosis with the differential diagnosis. See, it's a differential diagnosis with the examiner. Patient information, on and off cough, few months, but no, no, it is, but now it is all the time. Cough, okay. SOB, which worsen with climbing the stair with no sputum or blood, okay. One stone of weight loss, few months. Look at this. Here we think that it is the cough, few months on and off cough, okay. Shortness of person on climbing the stair. We will get the idea in our mind. It is heart failure. Climbing the stair. What make it worse? Climbing the stair. You will see, okay, it, it can be like heart failure, okay? So, never get confused in this kind of... They are asking about the DD. Stone weight loss, it is the cancer. My son was coughing TB. A lot while I was taking... Uh, okay, this is, this is just not TB. This is... Uh, just you to not let it go. Because you ask, have you ever been contacted in person with the, having the same symptom? Yes. With my son. How? Oh. Actually, I was having a video call and he was on the Skype and he, he was coughing. The patient can think that coughing in front of camera can pass this symptom to you. But you need to ask. You need to explore. He works in where he lives. He works in Tanzania. Okay. And you, if you assume by yourself here, because he is on the video, he cannot pass, but you do not ask the question when you met with your son. If he says, okay, two years ago, then the things are clear. If he says, yeah, three months ago, and symptoms started two months ago, symptoms started one month ago, that is association. Na? So you will ask when you visited your son lastly, when you visited your son lastly. So these kind of questions are to be asked, never to be missed. Trust me, these are the questions who, when you are doing a scenario, your concern is your approach. They give you the clue and you do not pick the clue. The clue is that from where the clue came, you ask about, okay, you, you ask a very simple question. Have you been in contact with anybody having the same symptom? You are actually ruling out the TB. Have you recently traveled? He says, he says Okay, he can say, I'm, I'm just discussing the scenario with you uh, because for me, it is a different bars. I do not, uh, I do not uh, uh, like uh, agree with the pay person who says there is no different bars. There is different bars in these scenarios. They can change the scenario. They actually sometimes change a little bit thing and they check it that whether you know that clinically or you have marked that data or that you have learned it by heart. So you need to know about the different bars. Okay, here it says, okay, I, have you ever been contacted? Yes, I have seen my, uh, uh, two, uh, like five days ago, I have seen my, uh, uh, my son who, who was coughing. Okay. So the symptoms started three months ago. So here you need to open your eyes. You need to open your eyes, open your ears. Okay. So th this, that's why I highlighted it because whenever these kind of fishy things comes, so you need to explore that more. Okay, my okay. Uh, last time I see him, three, 25 cigarettes, bottle of wine. I'm a gardener. Look at this. He is telling you everything. Like gardener is being asthmatic. It can be asthmatic. Cigarettes, it can be cancer patient. Uh, he's working in the wood cutter industry, has been working. He, okay, sometimes this is very, again, important question. I want to tell you this question as well because this is, Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? Uh, my voice is there. Can anybody confirm that? Hello?
हेलो हाँ मेरी आवाज आ रही है कैन यू पीपल हियर मी बिकॉज आई थिंक ओके 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 दिस थिंग अनदर थिंग आई वॉन्ट यू टू लाइक कीप इन माइंड वेन एवर यू find something is important going in your scenario ask two questions instead one what are they have you ever what is your occupation i'm working in a wood industry have you ever worked in an industry where you had got the asbestos exposure you need to ask that do you smoke no i do not smoke for example there was something very important where the smoking should be the risk factor Have you ever smoked? Yes, I have been smoking. Like, but I have left five years ago. But I will then again. Window will open that you will need to ask. How long have you been smoking? How many cigarettes have you been smoking? So we cannot be like magicians. At the same time, we will be doing a lot of things. But whenever you feel something is important, this could be. This should be the risk factor. And risk factor is like missing. You need to ask two questions here. Similarly, you are. what work do you do i work in a paper industry okay by any chance have you been exposed to the asbestos then the patient will be telling you yes i have been working in the shipyard industry like 5 years ago and how long been working there like 10 year okay so this thing you should know in keep in your mind okay then then there come another this same type of scenario ever to present with complaint of cough since few months this was look at this this was with cough and again the patient is with cough that is the dry cough again however this time it is the blood the other was not with the blood this is with the blood take the history and examine bad cough six month and the patient information again he is having the shortness of breath with climbing of stever blood but no sputum one stop of same information the given over there is here now again we will be ruling out the dd the dd for me here with the cup would be starting with the pneumonia because the starting with the dangerous first we will be asking first do you having have do you have any fever any flu like symptom then you will be asking about the tb any any recent travel having mean, contact with the same person having the same cup okay because the shortness of breath question you are going to ask i know and ha uh -huh, uh, one important thing by asking the shortness of breath question then or the cough question you when you ask about the cough then you will be asking question is that productive patient say yes it is productive then you will be asking three to four question about the productivity what are they how much how much quantity what is the color of your sputum okay does stain with blood okay so you will be asking the nature of the sputum as well okay if the patient says it is the sputum is there with the cough okay then again asking the dd of completing the dd here uh, you will be asking the asthma question you will be asking uh, any any association with any time you will be asking these three to four dd question and that are very common you because uh, the uh, cancer and mesothelioma will be ruled out in the red flag when you will be asking four question about the red flag what are the red flags the cancer questions what are they i i repeated for you like uh, have you lost uh, it's it's claw fever any any sweat any fever or any sweating uh, other is uh, no it's not sweating actually uh, what what is the flaw uh, because it's not it is the you will be asking first question uh, night sweats it's not sweating it's the fever and night sweats then we'll be asking about the weight loss we'll be asking about the appetite flaw is done morning for that okay the cancer will be ruled out here any chest pain any chest tiredness this is the question i have dd question i have put the dd question here heart racing light headedness all that okay complete the history what would be the management okay i'm talking about the first scenario the first scenario here it is important to tell about these both scenario all all most most are almost the same from my assessment you are having a lung issue lung problem this is the only thing you can tell it is very difficult for me it is for the first scenario 
it is which was having a lot of things together. Difficult for me to give you the fixed diagnosis that was wrong with you. However, because the symptom present with that are due to the different cause, use the suspected dangerous approach here. Suspected danger approach. This is suspected cancer approach. Suspected danger approach. This is the same approach you need to carry out. This is what it could be the simple condition diet. It could be the simple asthma or infection or it could be something very serious like lung cancer or TB. Okay. So you need to do that. This is called the suspected cancer approach, suspected danger approach. In this scenario, you will adopt that for disclosing it because the condition look like a dangerous one. Okay. And you do not know exactly. And because you are having the suspicion of cancer, whenever you are having the suspicion of cancer, there are two approaches only. One, suspected cancer. And what is the breaking the bad? Breaking the bad is when you are telling with the definitive diagnosis. For example, everything has been done. Report are with you. You need to tell the patient. Otherwise, it is the suspected cancer approach. What is the suspected cancer approach? The condition you are having can be as simple as it could be infection. It could be anything like this. Or it could be something very serious such as lung cancer or TB or mesothelioma. Okay. But to rule out that, we need to run a couple of investigations. And I'm going to send you, I'm going to refer you. If you are in the GP, then you are going to refer. And if you are in the emergency, then you do not need to refer. You need not to treat first. Because you need not to resolve that first. Okay. Because the, it's in the emergency. Okay. What will be our decision? The decision will, you will contact the senior. Not refer here. You will contact the senior and we need to admit you depending upon the result because you have already sent for all the results over in the OT approach. Okay. Then we will be doing the further investigations, doing ECG, X-ray, lung function test, and we will be doing Hello? Hello? Meri waaz aari hai? Yeah. Okay. Okay, you, you will tell your decision here that we will... Uh, we will keep you in a, under observation and we will be doing these tests and we we will be these are the tests all tests we need to do and then we will be doing the targeted what we will be confirming the diagnosis through ct scan and we will be rep, uh, calling for the pulmonologist and according to that uh, we can assist you according to that and just say that here you just they what they want to Actually, know that you know about how to tell this approach. If you have tell this approach, then depending upon the assessment, you will be telling your decision and you will be telling the uh, targeted treatment. And then, of course, the patient concern can come anywhere. Is that the treatable? Then again, you will be telling it will be depend upon the diagnosis. Yes, doctor, I understand. Okay, you will tell that you need a further test. This is all about the concern. This is for the information. Okay, okay. Let me share the screen. Yeah, now it is there. So, uh, actually, thus here the approach we have learned is actually the differential diagnosis even if it is the same second scenario i want even if it's the second scenario in the second scenario it is the clear that it is the cancer however you cannot rule out it is the cancer or mesothelioma because smoking is a risk factor for both of them so still you will use the suspected cancer approach and differential approach you will say uh, uh, from what I, I suspect 
from what you have told me as you are having this and that risk factor for what you have told me it seem like you are you can be suffering you can be suffering from a simple condition like uh, any chest infection or you can be having a like very serious condition maybe mesothelioma or lung cancer okay for that i need we need to refer you okay this is look at this this is the second scenario we need to like keep you under observation and we need to run a couple of tests and you will be in this scenario i want why i made these scenarios quite important because in this you will never know what exactly the cause is however in this scenario you will know that it is the cancer but which cancer you will not tell it is the lung cancer because it could be mesothelioma so still you will keep that doubt and you will use the suspected cancer approach here this what is suspected cancer approach i have told you what is that that you will be telling that uh, uh, we we need some expert opinion if you are on the gp surgery you need to be referred within a two week time you will need to be seen within a two week time that is urgent referral however if you are in the in if, if your setting is like your uh, emergency or your department you need to admit the patient you need to do the work up and you need to involve the other specialties okay the other scenario is dry cough this is pneumocystitis gyrovini it is again very important scenario and this is very commonly asked okay uh, i th uh, i think my internet is bad today you are having cough and breathless for few weeks the patient is homeless he is losing weight the, the, the this issue they are not going to tell you you need to explore that cut and they are not going to tell tell you about that presented with hospital with cough and shortness of breath for the few weeks you need to explore and you need to ask all these questions patient difficulty in breathing for 5 weeks okay so the, the, this is the patient information i am i am telling you dry cough difficulty in breathing for uh, can you hear me uh, because here it is constantly saying my internet is unstable yes okay also sharp chest pain took paracetamol not worked 5 by 10 is the pain patient is homeless talk to the patient relevant examination all that as a fee uh, feel toyed all the time lost a few kilos cigarette smoking use recreational drug needles and trust me if you are not asking these questions they are not going to tell you and because this is quite a bit different scenario the patient is in a relationship bisexual relationship unsafe sex all that history if you are not going to ask they are not going to tell you and you are go you, you will never reach to your diagnosis even if you reach to your diagnosis you will not get the good marks then this is the mu chart they will give you when you will be asking in the oet your oet okay okay dd uh, again asking about you you have asked about uh, shortness of breath cough and shortness you have done the two part t double o p a for shortness of breath and cough then you have asked about the anything then you did the rule in questions uh, of uh, shortness of breath you did the complete your dd after doing your complete your dd is pneumonia tb aids how you you aids should be in your mind like uh, lung ca mesothelioma asthma copd these are the same dd question which we have been asking like since we have started the cough scenarios okay then you can do the systemic inquiries nothing is going out you can do the systemic inquiry diarrhea vomiting you you start from headache anything okay then again the red flag is quite important here you will be doing the red flags and then you will be doing complete your history keep in mind these things are important look at here drug history 
you will be asking are you are you drinking alcohol uh, he, uh, you, you people can see my screen my screen is visible okay not no here you will be asking about the drug history for example for example when you are completing this thing history past medical history drug history uh, uh, family history then desa in the desa you will be asking about diet exercise then you'll be asking about uh, stress sleep and uh, smoking smoking is a yes okay and you have already known to some but this this, this person is having is is having a problem so you need to ask about is the drug history are you taking by chance and do you use irrigational drugs say yes which drug root of administration with whom do you do this drug needle exchange program do you know about the needle exchange program have you ever been registered with the needle exchange program okay so you need to ask about that and because you need you will answer all these queries later on okay then sexual history are you sexually active are you having stable partner or what is your sexual orientation please ask that because it is not in our society in their society you need to ask that because it is common in their society to have the like a strange sexual orientation for example can be bisexual can be gay can be lesbian you need to ask so do you practice the safe sex do you use condom drug do you do the drug with your partner have you ever been Uh, have you ever been diagnosed with the sexually transmitted diseases have you ever tested for the aids have you taken your partner have you talked about your partner about it you need to ask all these questions these are the sex history question you will learn in your counseling session but here whenever this kind of scenario comes you need to ask all because this is sexually transmitted disease whenever there is a sexually transmitted disease you need to ask all these questions okay then again you will be doing oet you will be taking abgs x ray blood test and doing all observation and examination of chest examination of your lung and general physical examination from my assessment it seems you are having the chest infection as your temperature is high oxygen is low and your x ray they will give you oxygen x ray finding it seems like you are having condition called chest infection this could be pneumonia so you you will say chest infection is enough so we need to admit you we need to give you oxygen because oxygen saturation is low you will give the oxygen we need to examine the phlegm and we so that you can because this bug this is the pneumogastric gerovini this is in the sputum so you will doing the sputum test and this all thing regarding the the sputum okay we are not able this is just read it one you need not to mention that in a very long way because this is not you need to not to mention all that if you do not get that you just tell that that i don't think so this is necessary to tell all that if we do not get the sample you just tell that however if we do not get we can go for other procedure okay just enough then aids counseling in this scenario the aids counseling is quite important why the patient is not labeled aids so this type of infection you will again use the suspected approach this type of infection sometimes caused by hiv infection i because it is it is sometimes because pneumogast is for sure having but we are not sure that he is having pneumocystis gyrovini or not because without this test sputum we cannot tell so we will do the suspected if this is the pneumocystis gyrovini we need to do further more test because this kind of infection is very common along come with aids okay hiv don't say aids because aids is different say hiv because hiv infection and aids are different entities because aids is the disease hiv is the infection only okay hiv spread with unsafe and sharing needle and and you are having all these risk factor in you okay so you will do what you will be do you will be doing the aids counseling and after that you will say that we are going to admit you and we are going to treat you targeted you have already admitted that and oxygen now you after admission you are going to give on antibiotic and after we are also going to give the steroid as well because steroid is also important in this treatment okay and in the long term what you are going to do is 
please come back if these symptoms occurs and practice safe sex and avoid needle sharing and you will be this is all long term you are giving the advices we will take the social sherpa and try and this is quite important we will talk to the social service and arrange home for you because he had told you i am not i am homeless when you have who do you live with i am homeless what do you do i do nothing so what you will do you will talk to home social service and arrange accommodation for you and encourage him to talk to the partner this is again quite important these are the thing you need to actually in this kind this is counseling scenario basically this is not the medicine scenario however you need to ask a lot of medicine scenario for in the management you have to counsel the patient so you will be asking in uh, i suggest that you go and talk to your to, because he tell you i have not talked to my partner talk to your partner and bring him for the testing as encourage him to bring her Uh, yeah or him whoever is this partner because in, in this scenario his partner is may bring him for the testing if he says no i don't want to tell my partner sometime because in this kind of scenario tell my partner i have a stable partner however i do the casual uh, uh, say i i do not do uh, the conventional practice i do the uh, what they say is the casual sex activities i do the casual sex as well so the patient got aids the patient got aids symptom he want you not to tell his like a permanent partner however you have to counsel the patient that it is your duty is your duty and duty of that person to tell to his partner if he, he keep on denying no i'm not going to tell my partner okay you will say okay it is our because it's the safety of your partner we should inform your partner in any way however we can use a patient uh um uh, partner notification program so partner notification program can be used to tell in which your identity will not be disclosed however we will call uh, your partner to come and do testing and you will tell to the person there will be the chance that your partner will know about that later on why she has come here for the testing or he has come for the testing better you go and talk to your partner so you need to encourage that okay safety netting is again about the symptoms yeah person or getting the multiple infection come back then it is the cough with sob it is the pneumonia scenario the patient daniel 75 year old presenting shortness of breath referred by the gp nurse colleague has seen the patient vital recorded x ray has been taken find the muse chart inside the cubicle okay this is the scenario shortness of breath two week flag phlegm is the spoonful no blood you are need to ask about the phlegm because it is the phlegm phlegm is with pneumonia shortness of breath with climbing the stair which is getting worse the, with having the chest pain it is all over the chest sharp pain increase with the cough then increase with the cough is the typical of pneumonia reduce Uh, nothing reduces the pain out six flu like symptom when it will tell you in the history it will will tell you that two weeks of two antibiotic and again it will open a window for you you will be asked about the antibiotic which antibiotic how antibiotic have been taken and took regularly for five days was diagnosed he has having diabetes and uh, diagnosed with he has been diagnosed with he is having bp and blood pressure and uh, diabetes and taking melodipine and metformin allergic to metronidazole drinks occasionally live with his wife this is all information of the patient okay this is the chart they have given like the temperature is more saturation is low respiratory rate is high so this is a bit different scenario not similar we are going to have the same approach a bit different again you will be asking about the pneumonia we always ask about the first then tb aids lung cancer mesothelioma same dds then again asking about the red flags the cancer scenarios then completing the history we have talked about then oet you do the cbc chest x ray f lfts rfts abgs you will be naming that ecg you will be naming all of them then they will be giving you the finding then there will become the from my assessment this is the i mean the chest infection we do the further test check the anemia because uh, no need to tell that because you have already done anemia no it is for the infection check if any infection acha okay this is 
this uh, telling you need to this is not in that way you will be telling because i was making this uh, i had not i could not have in the enough time to uh, like uh, you see in the end part the notes are not in that way but what in the first part from my assessment as you were you are having a symptom of you are having fever you are having symptom of shortness of breath which was started after having the flu i suspect that you are having a chest infection that that can be pneumonia okay this is your disclosing then the cn is we will keep you in the hospital we will give you oxygen before giving oxygen you need to again ask cobd question and give you oxygen and we will give you fluid through your blood veins why is that in the management of pneumonia the thing come in your mind take three give three pneumonia sepsis same whenever there is a sepsis there is pneumonia take three give three should be in your mind oh what is give three give three is oxygen fluid antibiotic what is take three three test one is uh culture uh, like a uh, and the other one is uh, uh, urine output take three ek, ek, one is monitoring and two is for test one is urine output is for monitoring lactate and blood culture these three you have to do that okay if the pneumonia scenario comes the patient will judge uh, the examiner will judge this you with whether know it or not okay so you will give it oxygen and fluids and you will keep on monitoring the urine output this is you have told after your decision this is my decision Targeted, what you will do? I will involve the senior, and we will be doing some special test called lactate level, and check the blood culture and which bug is this is, and its respond to antibiotics. It means you are telling the patient that we are checking your sensitivity, and we will check the lung function test, and we will examine your phlegm as well. Okay, then we will evaluate you based on the clinical evaluation and test. This is the curve sixty five. i have put the picture below and you will you will uh, see that picture you will you just read that what is the curve 65 we we can admit you this is still you are doing your decision we can ad keep you admitted or we can send you home on oral antibiotic depending upon your evaluation yes abgs are important but abgs we have already taken in the initially like here abgs we have done here so we we will not say that again and again okay abgs are quite important okay after please then you will in the case we send you home you need not to even doing that after there there come the patient concern you need to do penalty of water and you can if you send home for example there is a scenario you have reached to i am going to send you home because the patient need to be on the oral antibiotic his curb score is like 1 on 2 you can consider and 3 you will definitely admit on 1 you can you can will, will send home the curb 65 is 1 you can send home and then you will give these advices and in the long term safety netting if we decide you home exacerbation or pneumonia or any meningitis symptom like any shortness of breath you have in high grade fever you have any next stiffness please call 999 or come to the emergency at once okay this is curve 65 and this is his interpretation zero or one treat the patient to treat the in patient and you can consider in or out but on the three you are definitely in the patient two is treat inside okay then i think it's our last scenario of today it is the asthma scenario Uh, it is very long scenario because in this i am just uh, going to tell you the approach otherwise you are going to read the other information i have put below that like i am going to just discuss it briefly ever to adam presented with hospital wheeze and chest tiredness just it can't be just shortness of breath it can be chest tiredness so need to explore okay patient information chest tiredness started a day ago while playing football getting worse or getting better at rest also having wheeze getting better as rest it's on it's getting worse okay chest tiredness he's a smoker you need to ask all the history again but you will be asking samely there is no difference in the uh, sob approach or uh, this approach 
DD and after red flag, after that, you will be in the history, you will be asking the important question are allergies. You will never forget to asking about the allergy because it is, it is quite important. You will be asked about the pet and corporate history, rash, exercise history is quite important. Exercise history in here is quite important because in the asthma patient, sometimes they tell, I'm all right, but whenever I do the exercise, I, I have shortness of breath. I have wheeze. So that is exercise-induced asthma, okay? So you need to ask all these questions. There is nothing new. We have already talked about you will not, you will not assume this is asthma. You will be asking every question. Then you will become to the OET. You will be doing observation, examination of chest and general physical. You will be doing CBC, chest X-ray, PE, RF, LFTs, RFTs, and the management part would be again from my assessment condition is asthma. Asthma is the condition which cause difficulty in breathing. It is a condition smaller, affect the smaller airway which carry out your oxygen, air, which carry in and out oxygen. That's why it cause breathing difficulty because it's the constriction of your smaller airways, okay? So you can use your own simple words, whatever you know about that, just explain it. Decision, we are going, okay, what is the decision? You are not going to admit the patient because he's not having any asthma problem right now. The patient is in the GP and he want to talk about, otherwise he, he would have been in the emergency, he would have the problem of shortness of breath. He's telling you about his shortness of breath problem. So, what is your decision? We are going. We are going to give you blue inhaler, which is in reliever. Okay, tell about the reliever. Blue inhaler is salbutamol, and brown inhaler is steroid. Okay, and tell about that. Tell about its side effects. However, these are the common side effects. Tell about that reliever. That is your decision. Long term, what you can do? These are the prevention you need to do to prevent the asthma. Asthmatic, you know, asthma is not a treatable thing. That is the only manageable thing. So prevention is quite important in asthma patients, okay? So you need to tell all these prevention to the patient. This is the kind of his counseling station. Then you will be doing the counseling. I'm going to talk a few important things to you. These are the four things. Your medication, your peak exploratory flow meter, and how to measure these peak exploratory flow meter. You need to tell them. You, you, you can see that in the geeky medics, how to do that. Asthma diary, you need to maintain the asthma diary and triggers. There are certain triggers you need. Basically, actually, you will tell the asthma diary first, and then you will be telling about all that. In this, you will be asthma diary. I have put that. That is kind of asthma diary. Look at this. So according to the days, you need to tell them this is the asthma diary. You need to like explain that. These four things need to be taken care of, okay? Then comes the concern. Have you got any idea about how to use the device? This is the way, this is not comes in every scenario. They, they, if they want to check that, they will skip many other questions. How to use the device? You need to demonstrate the device. So you need to check that with the geeky videos, how to use that device and then read it. What should I record in the diary? You need to record these symptoms, any new things. These are the things you need to record in your diary. This is the diary. And then these are all, um, because this was the last scenario I was working on. I have I could not arrange that in the way I should have. So uh, you can read that, you can account. Keep in mind, this, will, uh, this approach will remain the same. Ex disclosing, decision, Targeted management, and last one is your uh, long-term management. So this is the same scenario we have talked about. Gee, students, the like our class for today is over. Now it is the question-answer session. You you can ask anything you want.